the Girls Against Girls book, which I talked with my mom about um, not that long ago. So can you take a second to introduce yourself? Yes, um, I'm Bonnie Burton. Uh, I am an author, and I've written, like you said, the Girls Against Girls uh, book, which is my anti-bullying book to help not just girls your age, but girls my age remind each other how to be good to each other and how to treat people with respect and compassion and also just how to be a better person. Mm -hmm. But I also do Star Wars books, so I did the Star Wars craft book, uh, Star Wars You Can Draw, and also draw Clone Wars books. And then I do easy readers, like to learn how to read, so for little kids I do Star Wars books like that. Yeah, we'll definitely get a couple from other ones. Yeah, they're amazing, and I'll send you guys some stuff too. Yeah. And I also do womanthology comics, which are comics that are all done by girls. Uh, and then I'm a journalist, so I write for CNET and Disney.com and a bunch of other places. Sweet. Um, so you wrote the Girls Against Girls, which, mm -hmm. about, which is about well, how girls can be mean together to each other, why yep. they do it, and what to do when it happens to you. But when you feel like doing it, why did you think it was important to write a book like this? Um, when I was little, and uh, not even that, like when I was in junior high school and high school, I got bullied a lot. And I think a lot of it was, I was a bookworm. Like I loved reading books and I loved kind of being by myself. And so I wasn't, I was kind of socially awkward and I talk really fast and when I'm nervous, I talk faster. Um, and I was super energetic. So I was always like I had just eaten a box full of sugar like constantly. And so because of that, I just didn't have a lot of friends and I was an easy target for bullies. And so it wasn't even bullies that are like, the kind that push you down or shove you in a locker. It was mean girls in the sense that they would talk behind my back or start rumors about me or whatever. And when I was that age, there were no real books out there I could read on how to deal with this. Like, because I was a bookworm, I always thought there was a book that answered everything. And so there must be a book that would tell me what to do. And when I was that age, there was nothing. And then when I got older, I kept hearing about my friend's kids that were being bullied or, um, people my age that were bullying each other at work. So I was like, I need to write a book. So I wrote a book called Girls Against Girls, and it's mostly for junior high. It's like your age on up. So elementary and junior high and high school. And I wrote it just to give like another voice out there. So if you feel like you've been bullied, if you feel like there's nowhere to turn, if you feel like you're the only one this happens to, you can read this book and know that that's not the case. You can get help. Most of the time, it has nothing to do with you at all. It's just people being jerks, and you can be yourself and be fabulous and not worry about it. So that's why I wrote it. Uh -huh. um, so one thing I'm seeing recently that's not in Girls Against Girls is that girls are being mean to each other because they're being too, like, traditionally like a female girl. Mm -hmm. So they're being too girly, and people are hating on them because some people just think feminism is... Feminism is woman equals man, but some people think that to be a feminist, you have to be like a man. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. they're hating on people that are that are girly and like a traditional girl. Okay. So what do you I, think about that? I think that's, well, first of all, that's crazy. Yes. Like, I think you could be any kind of girl, and it shouldn't, you shouldn't have to be one kind of girl to be a feminist or to be proud of yourself or, or to basically have self-esteem. I think if you like to wear dresses, that's totally cool. If you're a tomboy, and I don't even like that expression because I think wearing jeans is not necessarily a dude thing. I think that's totally fine for girls to wear. Like these, Clearly. These are jeans that were created in the girls section. Yeah, people. and I love that. And I love all the details and the hearts and flowers and stuff. And to me, like, I was a tomboy, so I didn't really dress up as girly stuff until I saw Star Wars. And then when I saw Star Wars, I dressed up as Princess Leia all the time, even when it wasn't Halloween, which was also why I got bullied because I was a weird girl kid but I think that and that's a great point and I wish I had put it in my book so maybe I think you should write a anti-bullying book because that's a great idea to kind of address why girls are mean to each other for how they look if they don't think they fit this sort of mold that they're supposed to fit um, and it's true there's girls that are mean to each other because they're either too girly or not girly enough or not you know taking a certain stance or looking a certain way and to those girls that like to wear girly stuff, I say keep doing it. There's nothing wrong with it. Um, you can be as girly as you want and still be a feminist. Just because you're a femi feminist is not a bad thing, and feminist doesn't mean you have to like act like a dude or dress like a guy. It just means that you're proud of yourself, that you're equal to guys, you're not going to be a lesser type person, and that you're proud to be a girl. I mean, to me, feminism is that you're proud to be a girl. 
And it doesn't matter what kind of girl you are, as long as you're good to other people and good to yourself, that's totally fine. Well, the only reason that I don't wear dresses is because they're uncomfortable to me. Mm -hmm. And I play with Monster High Dolls, I have American Girls, and I do a lot, and I like designing outfits for my characters. And I'm still, and I still don't think that's bad and, and like keep it a secret that I do that stuff. Yeah. I'm just proud of myself. Good! Yay! Yes. <laughs> You also wrote, wrote the Star Wars craft book, yes. which is really, which is really cool. I do craft videos every Monday, where we, well, at least we try and do craft videos every Monday. And I do stuff like Guardians of the Galaxy, Game of Thrones, mm -hmm. and a bunch of stuff like that. So um, I might be, and I might be doing some of your Yeah, try let try me know what you do on the Star Wars craft book. There's really easy stuff and hard stuff, so yeah. it's craft for everybody. So what got you into crafting? I got into crafts when I was really little because uh, we didn't grow up in a family that had a lot of money for toys, so you kind of had to make your own toys. Um, and my mom made a lot of stuff, so my mom was always knitting and crocheting, and she loves to garden, loves to cook, but she would always make stuff. And my dad is really good with woodworking, and he was a furniture, he did furniture building on the side uh, just for fun. And so I was kind of in, that was instilled in, to me by my parents that. If we can't buy something for you, just make it. Yeah. So I was a huge Muppets fan, and I loved anything to do with Sesame Street. I loved anything to do with puppets. So I would just make my own puppets, and I would get these old, old craft books from the library on how to make puppets, and I would just read those incessantly and try to figure out, okay, how do you make bag puppets versus stick puppets versus finger puppets versus giant animatronic puppets? And because of that, and I was such a huge fan of movies like The Dark Crystal, and anything to do with Muppets, anything to do with Gremlins, anything to do with Rick Baker, who was a really famous, and he still is a very famous, creature maker for movies and makeup artist. Um, in fact, he has an auction, I think, coming up. Uh, I wrote about it on CNET, and he's selling off a bunch of Gremlins puppets, which looked amazing. But when I was a little kid, I wanted to make that stuff, so I just kind of taught myself. Um, I was also in Girl Scouts and 4-H, and I learned how to just do basic sewing skills and um, puppet sculpting. And and the thing is, you don't have to know stuff to start crafting. Like I, when I was super little, I would paint rocks. So I would do pet rocks and like paint them to look like pandas or like dogs or whatever. Um, one thing I do, uh, vandalize or put googly eyes on everything. Like put googly eyes on my path, pass. And, I stick googly eyes, uh, I just don't stick googly eyes on other people's art, unless they want me to, and I try not to do anything illegal, so I don't put it on stop signs, but I'll put it on like billboard, like billboard signs at the bus stop, or I'll put it on all anything that I have that are my clothes, I, like, I put it on shirts, I put it on my, my eyeglasses, I put it everywhere. Um, and that's kind of like crafting, because you're putting googly eyes on stuff, it's like an instant craft. You can put googly eyes on a rock, and all of a sudden that's crafting. Um, so I just try to just do whatever, but when I was little, I just constantly craft. Constantly watercolored, coloring books, made paper dolls, made outfits for both my dolls, my brother's G.I. Joe figures. I made different outfits for Chewbacca, because I had a Chewbacca doll that was big, so I made him like Lederhosen and like cool jumpsuit. I, I treated my Chewbacca doll like Barbie, pretty much. And then I also just, uh, I made outfits for my Godzilla toys. I was a weird kid. I have a feeling we would have totally been best friends. Though. <laughs> yes. But I just, I don't know. I loved crafting when I was little. Yes. Um, and I still do. Yes. Um, I'd love to start doing something where, like, what you do where you craft with someone while sort of interviewing them. Yeah. So uh, where did you get started by doing that? Are people normally open to being able to do that? You know, it's interesting. I did a show for Stan Lee's World of Heroes YouTube channel called Geek DIY. And the craft show that I wanted to do is kind of like Will Wheaton's tabletop show, where Will invites his friends to play tabletop games with him, and it's a different group of friends each episode. So I did Geek DIY, where I just picked one friend that either I knew could craft or was afraid to craft. So I could convince them how easy it was and convince them how much fun it was. And then we'd do a thing like with Will Wheaton, we made dice pillows. So yeah, we made these giant, really cool. so much fun. Yeah, and then with, um, I think like he asked for a double, I can't remember. Yeah, he wanted, he wanted a 21-sided yes. die, and it would have taken us three days to do that, so <laughs> I had to do something quickly, so we just did regular dice. But he was, I don't, I don't think he's a crafter, and he definitely did not want glitter on him. So there's certain people that just, they don't like crafting until you show them how, and then they're totally into it, or at least they're open to it. 
And so I had fun with that show because it was with Grant Imahara from Mythbusters. We made a really crazy bad robot costume. But he had so much fun, and he's used to making real robots. And this was just a weird costume that looked like it was from 1950s or something. But we had fun doing that. And honestly, if you want to do something like that, uh, my biggest advice to you is don't worry about making mistakes. You can always edit that out or keep it in. I always think bloopers are great. So I have to keep yeah. stuff like that in. And, how, and always pick a craft that you know you can do fast. I always do the steps ahead of time. Um, I feel like that's my voice. Like I was like, I was thinking, what time? No, so when I do a craft show, it's kind of like a cooking show. I don't know if you watch Food Network or like Junior Chef or Master Junior Chef or anything. Sometimes they'll have stuff already made in steps, so you don't have to do the whole craft at once. You can show it in steps. But if you do that, if you do a show like that yourself, it's super fun, super easy. Just remember to have fun. Anytime you do anything on YouTube, you have to remember, this is for fun. Have you had any problems being a woman in a male dominated field? Have I any problems about being a woman in a male dom dominated field? Um, I think the only problem I have is sometimes you second guess yourself every once in a while. And I think this is in any career or any field where you really are passionate about it and you love what you do, but then you meet someone who's kind of down, talks down to you or makes you feel bad about it. You have to remember when people come to you like that or they try to keep you down or they try to prevent you from being awesome or they try to, uh, they criticize you but not in a constructive way. That's their deal. Most of the time they're jealous or envious of what you're doing or they feel threatened because they're not as talented, they're not as optimistic, they're not as excited as you are. So you kind of have to just remind yourself that a lot of times it's other people's problems, not yours. So whenever I'm doing comics, or I'm doing video games, or doing something that, and I don't even think that's a male-dominated field anymore. I think that that's, a lot of girls are already in that. You just have to remind yourself that you're there for a reason. You just, the only person you ever have to prove yourself to is yourself. Yeah. That's it. That was a really, really cool project. project. Do you know where, where did that come from? Yes. So, uh, <laughs> it's kind of funny. Googly eyes have been around, I think, since the 1940s. Like, they've been around forever. And they're the cheapest thing to buy in the craft store. And they were always on sale. So I would buy a bunch of them. And then when I would get googly eyes, like, I think, if you want to throw me the tin. So, emergency googly yeah, yeah, yeah. So these are emergency googly eyes, which is funny because Archie McPhee sells these. It's a great toy store in Seattle, and they're online as well. But the reason they have a tin is I, was a, I buy toys all the time. So I said that I buy googly eyes, but I would give them to kids because I do signings and conventions and people always knew that I do vandalize. And I would give them to kids, but they'd always be in a plastic bag, so it looked kind of sketchy from a distance if I'm giving kids. It looks like I'm just giving candy. It doesn't look like I'm giving googly eyes. And I wanted a cool tin, so I asked them if they could make one just for storage, not even googly eyes. And once they figured out what I was doing, they were so excited. They're like, well, why don't we just make googly eyes? And I'm like, yes. And so they make regular ones. These are the glow-in-the-dark ones. Um, I'm trying to get them to do colored ones or monster ones, okay. too. I've seen a couple, like, pink backgrounds. Yeah, well, the cool thing is all craft stores sell different kinds of googly eyes. These are fun because you can take the paper off and they're like stickers. But other ones, like if you get them at Target or a crafting store or Michaels or Joanne Fabrics or whatever, wherever you get your craft supplies or art supplies, there's googly eyes there. I like them because it kind of is a way to do graffiti also without being illegal, without getting into trouble. Because if you walk past a sign that, or a flyer or something that's like, uh, like I like to put them on lost cat flyers, lost dog flyers, because I think it's hilarious that they're on the dog, whatever. And hopefully they still find their pet, but still. <laughs> Um, I just think it's fun because it's And I hope people aren't like, I, I don't see a dog with big dogs. I know, right, yeah. right. That would be so scary if that really existed. But yeah. I just love it because it's easy. You can put them on everything from popsicle sticks to, you know what I love to do. So I put them on everything inside my refrigerator. So when you open up the refrigerator, your ketchup and your mustard and your mayonnaise and soy sauce, everything has googly eyes on it. So it looks like they're having a party without you. And I bought... You know those Christmas ornaments that are tiny disco balls that you can put on your Christmas tree? Yeah. I have one inside my refrigerator, <laughs> and I have all my condiments in a circle, and I made uh, out of pipe cleaners, Chanel stems, arms and hands, so they're like this. 
So when you open up the fridge, it looks like they're having a dance party. That's awesome. But it's just ketchup and mustard and weird stuff. And I put it on fruit. Just don't eat the googly eyes. Because <laughs> it will go through you and that's horrible when you see that later. And don't let your pets eat it because you also see that and there's nothing more horrifying than seeing googly eyes in a cat litter box. It's creepy. But I always put it on everything inside the fridge. And then when I'm visiting friends, I'll put it on their light fixtures, like their, you know, the light switches. Yeah, like, um, so the light switch is like their nose and there's like eyes right there. Um, and also on their toasters. Yeah. yeah. I remember, coffee like, machines. It's always good on coffee machines. Like, after Bonnie left, all of the yes. light switches had googly eyes on them. Yeah. Yeah, like when I I stayed with Will, Will and Ann Wheaton, are friends of mine, and I stayed overnight at their house once, and this is before Ann and I started doing Vandalize together. And I brought a tin of googly eyes, and when they were sleeping, I put googly eyes on everything. When they were sleeping. So when they woke up in the morning, and I put it in ways I didn't think they'd notice. I put it on, like, when you open the lid of the toilet, I, I went in and put them in on Will's toilet, and he didn't know it for, like, weeks, and then he saw it at one point, and he's like, wait, when did this happen? And then I put on all their light fixtures, and then some, their faucets, and then stuff inside the fridge. And it was the most hilarious thing ever. And that's when Anne's like, oh my god, we should do this all the time. And she's the one that came up with vandalize. It's such a great pun. Because it's like vandalizing like graffiti, but it's not really because there's eyes, not graffiti graffiti. And she and I have been doing that forever. So we uh, do t-shirts that have the vandalized logo on it for Mighty Fine uh, shirts and all the proceeds go to Pasadena, Pasadena Humane Society. And then we made, I don't know, I should have worn them, but for Espionage Cosmetics, you know the nail stickers, like nail wraps? Yeah. We made glow in the dark googly eyes for your nails, which I will send you some if you want some. Uh, and they're, glitter, they're glitter too. They're glow in the dark and glitter. Yeah. So I'll send you some. Um, so we did that, and we just had fun with it. Yeah. And that's the thing, like googly eyes, it's the easiest thing to craft with. I love it. I made a wreath for Christmas that's all googly eyes on styrofoam. <laughs> so much fun. Yes. yes. Like you can do vandalize any everywhere. Yeah. yeah. You, you do it on the badge. You could do it on yourself. You could do it right there and right there. Or you, you could do, do it right there. Yeah. Do it on the eyes. Yeah. See. Do Done. You did. Done. Yep. Yeah, that's perfect. That's perfect placement too. Yes. And the great thing too is um, if you are if you're on Twitter or if you're on social media, just do hashtag vandalize, yes. and then you can see what everybody else is doing. And then we have a blog that's vandalize.net, yes. and you can see how everyone vandalized. Yes, just yes. All I want to take a picture after we're done. I'll take a picture of that. Yeah. I'll add it to our blog. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So yes. thank you for taking a couple of minutes to sit down with us. Anytime. I love your channel, and I, I'm a big fan myself, so I'm honored that you asked me to do this. Thank you for reviewing my book. And then if you want, I can, send you my, yeah, I can send you my other books if you want to like review any of those. Oh, yeah, um, awesome. But I want to see what you write, because I think you would be really good at writing both uh, anti-bullying book, but I want to see if you do a craft book. Oh, I've, I've, I'm working on writing uh, some fiction stuff right now. Yeah, I want to see it. Yeah, definitely. So keep me updated on what you're doing. And then when I have the YouTube show again, I'll bring you on my show. Yay. Okay, good. It's time to press the subscribe button. A subscribe button. A subscribe button. A subscribe, subscribe. Bye, 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 bye.